Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lukes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. In this lesson, we're going to look at a uh, fairly straightforward cooling tower example. Now, the technique for using overall mass transfer coefficients begins by creating a graph of HY versus T data. For equilibrium, you'll get a curve. And then on the same graph, plot the operating line. So you're going to start with knowing the H1, the, or the enthalpy of the gas at state one, the, feet, uh, the inlet, and the temperature of the liquid at that same location, which is the exit. And so you'll get a point, and then you'll usually know the slope. So that means you know L over G, the liquid over the gas flow rate, and you know C sub P for the liquid, and so you can draw a line with that slope. This will end at TL2, which would be the feed temperature of the liquid, and that determines your operating line. Then for each one of these points, you're going to measure and figure out what H star is compared to H and take those differences. That's gonna be really your driving force. And what you're aiming for is so that you can get to the point that you can do the numerical integration which this gives us the number of transfer units and multiply by the height of a transfer unit and this gives us the height z. So in our example, we have a counterflow induced draft cooling tower that's going to operate with inlet and exit temperatures of 105 degrees and 85 degrees. This is for the air having a dry bulb and wet bulb temperature of 90 and 76 degrees Fahrenheit. The tower has four feet of packing, and the flow rates are given as GY, which is the gas flow rate, 2,000 pounds per hour per square foot, and GX is 2,200 pounds per hour per square foot. What we want to do is determine the number of transfer units, the height of a transfer unit based on the overall gas phase driving force, and the temperature approach. So just let me remind you of the formulas for these. So we have the approach is the temperature of the liquid coming out minus the temperature of the gas coming in. The cooling range is the difference between the inlet and outlet water temperatures. And our energy balance is the flow rate of the liquid times C sub P for the liquid and delta T of that liquid. And that's going to equal G sub Y times the delta enthalpy for the gas. And the signs are switched on these simply because it's going out of one and into the other. We have our formulas for number of transfer units and our height of a transfer unit. So these are the basic formulas we need for this first part. And then the second part says if the cooling load remains the same but the air temperature drops to 70 degrees with a wet bulb temperature of 60, so we're going to be changing these two values, predict the water temperature and the temperature approach. So let's begin looking at the solution by first calculating the enthalpy of these air streams. Now we have formulas in the book or you can look these up but the enthalpy of the gas coming in with a temperature of 90 degrees and a wet bulb temperature of 76 is 32.7 BTUs per pound mass. Uh, this is from the formula in section 10.5. I know in my energy balance, I know the enthalpy coming in, I know G sub Y, I know G sub X. This is liquid is water, so therefore I can find C sub P. I know the temperatures at the inlet and the outlet. So I can use this to solve for 
HY at the outlet. So 54.7 BTUs per pound of dry air is my exit enthalpy for this gas. So now let's look at a graph. If I plot the equilibrium values of enthalpy versus liquid water temperature and then plot my starting and stopping points for my operating line, I can see this is my graph. And what I can do is I can select a few values of T and you'd probably want more than three, but for the sake of doing it by hand, we'll just pretend three points is adequate. And I want to measure at these three points what the enthalpy is for saturation and what the enthalpy is for my operating line. And then I need to know what is HY star minus HY for each of these. So simply subtract. Our estimation is based on the integral. So the integral is going to go from 85 to 105 dy or dHY over this difference here. And so if I look at this using, say, a trapezoid rule, my function for each of these intervals is 1 over these differences. And I want to average the two endpoints and multiply by delta HY. This is for my first interval and then add to that for my second interval and this is an approximate value of the NTU. Now I did this using slightly more points earlier and what I found was that the number of transfer units was 1.82. Your answers will vary with your ability to read the graph and how many intervals you're patient enough to do. Now this problem is a little bit unusual because we're told that the height of packing is four foot. And this will be equal to the number of transfer units times the height of a transfer unit, I know this value, and so I can solve for the height of a single transfer unit is four feet divided by the number of transfer units, and so about 2.2 .2 feet per transfer unit. And if you want to know what the temperature approach is, then what you can do is you just simply need to look here because at the exit, this temperature should be the temperature of the gas, if it we're assuming it's essentially saturated. But if not, you can use this exiting enthalpy and use that to solve for T of the liquid and compare that to what you would have gotten based on the drawing. And that will tell you your approach. Okay, so let's look at this more interesting question though. Because now then, on another day, the weather is gonna change. This is just, you know, reality. The air temperature changes all the time. So on this other day, let's say the temperature is 70 degrees Fahrenheit and 60 degree wet bulb temperature. So the humidity level is 0.09 and our enthalpy of our inlet gas is 18.9 BTUs per pound of dry air. So what I need to do is then estimate that the number of transfer units 
remains the same, right? I've built the tower. So this part stays the same. And this is equal to my hy1 to hy2 dhy over hy star minus hy. And I know what's coming in, I just don't know what's going out. So what I need to do is do this numerical integration, but I'm solving for my limit of integration. And so this becomes a trial and error solution. And what I found was that the temperature coming out was 75 degrees Fahrenheit for the liquid for a temperature in of 95 degrees Fahrenheit using still the 20 degree cooling range. But again, you're going to have to do this with a computer to have any hope of getting through this problem. But it's just an interesting thing to think about and yeah, you have all the skills to do this calculation. So at this point, I'm going to wrap up this example. There's another example uh, for you to look at. And then we'll have one more little video lesson for you to just kind of have a wrap up of these concepts. Thank you very much for your time.